I appreciate the opportunity to come down here, and uh, I'm going to share with you some of the. See, where's the button turner on this thing? I'm going to share with you some of the uh, secrets of uh, of America. Uh, where's the little uh, button pressure? Somebody stole it. Is it down there. That's all right. I'll just tell them next slide, I guess. <laughs> all right. Let's go to the next slide there. Well, the first. First uh, great uh, American secret is the Grand Canyon field. Can you imagine a, a well being drilled to about 4,000 feet? They go in an overturned upside down uh, um, clip of Devonian carbonates and it starts flowing 4,000 barrels a day. And it continues flowing 4,000 barrels a day. The company that drilled into it said, this is going to be coming dry home. They heard it and sold it. Anyway, it kept flowing that way for 10 years in Nevada. Okay, that's one of the best kept secrets in America. Let's go to the next secret. Okay, when we talk about oil shales in Nevada, or the United States, we talk about the ones uh, back in the east and the Balkan and down in Texas. Rarely or ever uh, do I ever say anything about the Great Basin, which is just a little bit west of the thrust belt. That's that red line down there. You got the Great Basin out there. You hardly ever see anything about it. Well, let's look at a cross section through the Great Basin. Next slide. Okay, what we do, we have a wedge of uh, Pilozoic rocks that go from a couple thousand feet to up to 40,000 feet. And out of the Great Basin, we have represented all the shells of America stacked up together. Only in Nevada, they're measured in thousands of feet instead of hundreds of feet. Imagine that. That's a neat secret. Let's just focus in on one of those shells. We'll look at the, uh, uh, the, uh, ba uh, the Barnett shell equivalent. This is the Mississippian shells. If you do a, 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 an isopac map or a map of the total organic richness to see what the volume, see what the quality of the source rocks are, you, sometimes you get up to four and five and six percent average organic content over thousands of feet. Now, if you take all that organic matter and, and can multiply it together and calculate out the amount of, amount of barrels you can produce, you can literally produce trillions of barrels of oil. Okay, now you're not going to get a trillion barrel oil field, but some of that oil generated during the late Cretaceous, early, uh, uh, late Cretaceous, early tertiary compressional event, uh, that's that thrust belt thing that goes through there, and the oil migrated eastward. And then some of the oil got trapped in the Utah-Wyoming thrust belt, some of it got trapped in the Covenant field, and, so, and a lot of the oil charged those giant oil sand structures over in eastern Utah, and those things probably had hundreds of billions of barrels of oil in, but the... Uh, but the Colorado River ripped off the, the seal off that. All the volume has gone through, so most oil has gone, gone out. But you still have left over 13 billion barrels of oil in the residue after all the good stuff is gone. So, and, uh, and so you, that, that's kind of the picture of the Great Basin. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now, another uh, neat secret of the Great Basin, I went to five universities, ten to five universities, and they all taught the same false model. Did you know the Great Basin is part of the Western Cordillera that comes out of Alaska? It goes all the way down through the Rockies and down, through the, down to the Terra de Fuego down in the tip of Chile. We're part of a compressional belt, not extension like taught in all these dumb schools I went to. Okay, it's compression that caused the north-south grain there, and that's something that's, that sounds like uh, blasphemy, but it's not. And uh, when you find a thrust belt like this worldwide, thrust belts and, the, and the adjacent Fordland basins have a fourth of the world's known oil in it. And we're part of a major thrust belt system. Let's look at the next slide here. That thrust belt system that is called the Cordillera Occidental, which is a Spanish word for uh, western rope, you know, like the mountain chain. It goes up through, uh, through Venezuela, which is the largest oil producing area or known oil currents on Earth. But over here in the Great Basin, we have some of the richest source rocks of the world, some of the thickest and thickest. It's much thicker and richer than anything in Venezuela. And whenever you get a, a shale basin, it's been compressed together by, uh, by thrusting, uh, that's where you get some of the largest oil fields of the world. That's where you start getting super giant oil fields. The big oil fields up in Canada are part of this thrust belt, but that goes right through, uh, right through the Great Basin out here. And the good news about the Great Basin shales when you put it under that kind of compression, uh, you don't have to artificially frack the shells. The good Lord already did it for us by fracking them, by pressing those rocks together, and the oil squirted out of those shells and got caught up in the big anticlines. And uh, now the other neat thing is, when the oil migrated from the kitchen out in Nevada into Utah, 
there's, there's many, many uh, uh, wrinkles in the blanket, if you want to call it that way, where, uh, where the oil had to fill up the uh, spill point and then get over into the next one and over to the next one. None of those, there's 128 structures, or 100, 165 structures, none of them been drilled. They cover about 20 million acres. All of them could have either billions or trillions of, billions of barrels of oil or tri trillions of cubic feet of gas, and it's never been explored. The other part of the good news, the Great Basin is some, one of the oil provinces is closest to the Pacific coast to be able to get the oil to the Asian energy markets. Next slide. So here's, a, here's kind of a cartoon cross-section through the, through the Great Basin. Here you have uh, the rocks all wrinkled up here caused by the thrusting, and you have the leading edge where they were to prove some oil. But each one of these structures uh, filled up the spill point and uh, were charged, and none of those structures have been tested yet. And the good news is the leases are now available. Okay, and you get them cheap. Okay, and uh, we like that. Thank you, President Trump. Okay, it's mostly federal land. Okay, next slide. Okay, well, why hasn't the Great Basin been explored before? Good question. You know, I'd worked for Exxon, I've worked for Gulf, got by, by Chevron, I got, worked for Marathon Oil, I worked for uh, uh, Placid Oil. You know, why haven't the big oil companies found oil? Nevada is one of the only states in the union that's never had a state geologic survey. It's never been done. And Western Utah, most Utah had a survey, but they relied on summer field camps to map Western Utah. So the Great Basin has a hole in the data. Okay, it's never been explored. Never been the, the, the primary data has never been uh, developed. Well, Shell Oil Company recognized the potential of this area back in the early 50s, right after World War II, and uh, they decided to put together the first stratigraphic framework. Shell Oil put together a program that started in the 50s, went all the way up through the 60s, about 20 years. They spent about $200 million, and they created a super team of uh, Great Basin stratigraphers and created that $200 million database, and they found the first discovery in Railroad Valley. That's uh, a valley, a Railroad Valley there in central Nevada. Uh, just before they found that discovery, uh, that was 1954, just before he found out some professor at Stanford says, I'll drink every drop of oil you find in Nevada. Well, that professor would be awful sick. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and about 20 years later, uh, another company came in and filled, found another field across the valley from, uh, from uh, where Shell found their field. Then 1983, that's when the Grant Canyon well was drilled, just south where Shell found that, their first discovery. And about that time, Getty Oil found another field up in Pine Valley. Now, thrust belts around the world usually have oil seeps that bubble to the surface. That's why they have the eternal flame over in the Middle East. They went over looking for oil because of the oil seeps. Uh, out here in Nevada, we had oil seeps, but they were sealed in by uh, tertiary volcanic rocks about 30 million years ago. And so if, if, you, if you drill into one of those commercial oil seeps after 30 million years, that's why you have that oil producing. So all the oil produced in Nevada so far has been from commercial oil seeps. But because there wasn't a geologic survey, people couldn't figure out where that oil come from. For, for example, that Grand Canyon field, it's on a 60-acre structure. It's produced 20 million barrels of oil, dry holes all around it. Yeah, and, and it's produced now about four or five times more fluid than poor space available. That baby's tapped into a big mama bear down here. And because there's no geologic survey, the companies couldn't figure out the plumbing to find the big kahuna. I think we got, I think we got a lead on that one now. Okay, uh, about the time I was working for Exxon up in the Utah Wyoming overthrust belt back in the 70s, the USGS condemned everything uh, west of that red line, says there's no oil there. It's too broken up, too, too faulted, too complex. Can't be oil there. And uh, there's about a thousand wells drilled up in the, the southwest Wyoming, northern Utah. And Amoco came in and drilled a, a, a 12,000 foot well in Pineview, northern Utah. And, uh, and it was a dry hole. They said, yep, USGS is right. But, a couple of geologists, had to be geologists, you know, they, uh, they got a hold of the, some of the survey from Wyoming that had been working on the survey for 100 years, and Utah had been working for 100 years, looked at Amical Well and says, we think we can deep, deepen that Amical dry hole and make a discovery. Anybody want to invest with us? <laughs> well, people laughed at him. They said, what do you think, why do you think there's oil there? We think we, we think we can go through these Paleozoic rocks and go back into Jurassic sandstones charged with oil. And they were almost laughed out of the industry. But finally, they got American Quasar to join them. They went ahead and deepened that well from 12,000 down to 16,000 feet, got into Jurassic sandstones charged with oil, and found 40 million barrels. 
But because they did that, everybody else realized that area was hot, a hot potato and the land just went exploded. Just before they made that discovery, Mr. Anschutz uh, came in, at Mr. Phil Anschutz from Denver, he came in, he, he bought a sheep ranch just north of the Pine, uh, Pine View uh, well. Because he, he, had, he had a sense of uh, what was going about, about to happen there. And uh, after they filled, drilled that well, uh, you could have bought any lease you wanted there at that time for a buck an acre. If Energetics would have bought a million acres, the average lease sale after, after the average price per acre of the leases went for over $10,000 an acre after that discovery. If you had a million acres, they'd have made $10 billion just on the land deal. But uh, Mr. Anschutz bought the ranch, and sure enough, they found one of the biggest gas fields on, on East Anschutz Ranch. And Mr. Anschutz become a billionaire. And uh, that pipeline that goes down there, that's what lights up Las Vegas. 80% of the power in Las Vegas is turned by the turbines from Mr. Anschutz's uh, gas field. And it also goes into Southern, Nevada, uh, Southern California. California loves uh, Wyoming gas from, uh, from you know, down this line here. Well, I worked for Marathon Oil for uh, four, uh, three years in uh, Utah. And there's no source rocks there. And yet I was wondering, why, why do we get these big oil sands over here? And you know, where, where's all the oil coming from? Well, it had to be migrating from Nevada. But when, uh, about that time, uh, uh, there's a, uh, Chevron had some leases around where they, they say that Covenant Field. And the Chevron dropped their leases because there's no source rocks there. And one of their geologists says, I think you're wrong. And they, he resigned from Chevron, put together, so couldn't get anybody from industry to join him, so he got some doctors and uh, attorneys, whatever, put enough money together and bought a couple hundred thousand acres there in central Utah, a couple hundred thousand acres, a buck fifty an acre. And then he drilled, got enough money to drill one well. 700 million barrel oil field. Subthrust, Jurassic sandstones, key words. Jurassic sandstones, okay? And uh, those, those investors, uh, by the way, they got a 10,000% th uh, return on investment. They become billionaires, okay? Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, here's a, here's a map of the sandstones. The sandstones up there in Wyoming overthrust and uh, central Utah, uh, they're, they're just a little over 1,000 feet thick. But as you go down toward Las Vegas, they get up to close to 5,000 feet thick. We have two wells that uh, drilled west of that red line where USGS says you're not supposed to be drilling. Uh, the Hunt well, they, they went from Precambrian back into Jurassic. Uh, just north of Las Vegas, 20 miles north of Las Vegas, Grant, uh, Grace Oil Patrol went from Cambrian back into Jurassic. Okay, so they confirmed the model there. And so, but you even have something better than that. And that's one reason I moved to Las Vegas. Let me show you one of the things I see every morning. Next slide. Well, not that one yet. We'll get, we'll get to it. Okay. Uh, one of the neat things about the Great Basin is that you have the Colorado River coming down here. And by headward rivers into the Colorado River, you've exposed the core of mountains. And uh, now the Great Basin is everything from that red line all the way over to the Sierra Nevada. So that's, that's the Great Basin area. But you can see where the Colorado River is, uh, did a lot of erosion and, uh, and it actually exposed the cores of mountains. Next slide. And this is the thing that I see every morning when I wake up and I look across the valley at the Spring Mountains. I see Paleozoic rocks on top of Jurassic sandstones. The main reservoir rock that's produced almost 7 trillion barrels of oil, or 7, cubic, 7 trillion cubic feet of gas, hundreds of billions of barrels of oil. And that's what I see every morning. North of here, I've got huge structures that's never been drilled and they haven't been breached yet by the erosion. Am I excited about drilling that area? I can't hardly wait. And, uh, and these sandstones are about 5,000 feet thick, five times thicker than where they produce 7 trillion cubic feet of gas. Multiply that by five. Okay, next slide. Okay, so uh, I, I don't have time to explain, but uh, over the years, over the 40 years, I've been able to acquire a huge stratigraphic data set. It's the first digital stratigraphic database of the Great Basin uh, where I've where I designed a method of uh, logging outcrops of simulation counters. I have a gamma ray log of all my, uh, measure of my stratigraphic work besides the well data. Anyway, I presented this data to uh, Exxon a couple years ago. As I walked out, the, the guys from Exxon, one of their elite teams, says, Alan, do you realize it would take Exxon several decades and several billion dollars to duplicate this data set you have? And I just smiled. And I said, well, Exxon, why, why don't you come out and join me? And Exxon said, their geologist says, we don't do that anymore. What we want you to do, we want you to go out and we want you to get, finish, finish getting your data. We want you to train up some experts because there's no experts on the Great Basin. You can't go to any school in the country and find a Great Basin uh, expert. There are none. Okay. Uh, and so we need to train up some experts and then uh, go get the leases. There's 20 million acres out there on these, on these structures I want to go get. 
and uh, go get the leases. And once you get that done, call us and we'll bring the checkbook. X XTO all over again. Hey, you know, $41 billion for XTO, that's a piece of cake. Okay, next slide. So what I've done is take, I've taken all this stratigraphic data, my mapping data and gravity data, put it together. I created a structural contour map of the Eastern Great Basin. And that's how I've identified these 165 structures. Here's a sample of four of them. Okay, and I put a million acre block around it so you can kind of, kind of fence it in. And this, and there's, there's, again, there's 165 of these. If I superimpose that over Guar, Saudi Arabia, 65 billion barrel oil filled, there's where it fits. And regionally, Guar's a little bit bigger. But look down at the bottom down there. Guar is on 50 foot, or 50 meter contours. Nevada, 500 meter contours. I like that. That's comparing apples and apples. Okay, next slide. So uh, if, you, if you want to know more about this, I don't have a whole lot of time today to tell you about it. If you'll provide me your business card, I've, I published a little paper in the Oil and Gas Financial Journal, I'd be glad to get you a copy of that. And if you like that, I'll, I'll be glad to provide you a set of these slides and a little notes that go with them. And, uh, and if you really get excited, next slide. Uh, I'd like to take you on a helicopter field trip. I've run lots of these, hel executive helicopter field trips, and take you out and put your hands on the rocks in Nevada. I'll show you those source rocks. I'll show you the reservoir rocks. I'll show you the big structures. And, and uh, there's some place out there you can take a hammer and hit the rocks. You can see the oil coming out of the rocks on the outcrop. You can smell it, taste it, feel it. I love oil. I, I must have stiffed gas when I was a kid. I, I love the smell of oil. It smells like money. <laughs> okay. And so I'd like to invite you all to come to Las Vegas, but uh, please give me your business cards and I'll provide that copy of that uh, paper for you. And if you want to know more about it, I can I provide a set of my slides. And really, if you want to find out about it, come on out to Las Vegas and uh, I'll give you a business reason to come to Vegas. Thank you very much. <laughs>